Okay, well, with that, we will be moving into our Annex 9 Climate Change Impacts um, Extended Subcommittee Quarterly Call. Um, so let's see. So it's the second part um, of our meeting today, and we welcome anyone from the webinar again who wants to continue on and listen. It's open to everyone. And uh, since we're now transitioning into that Annex 9 quarterly call, I'd love for everyone who's still on the line to um, put your name and your organization into the question box. I don't know if our chat is working for all of you, um, but if you can put it either in the chat or in the question box, um, that would be great. We'd like to record who's all on this call and know where you're, um, who you're with. So if you could do that, I'll let you go ahead and put that information in. Um, again, everybody's been muted right now um, to eliminate that excess noise, um, but we do want this to be a discussion between us and all of you. Um, so if you have a question or a comment, feel free to raise your hand icon and we'll call on you and we will actually unmute you because instead of putting questions into the box, we want you to actually ask them or make comments or tell us what you're doing um, verbally. So um, that will be um, good for that. Um, all right, next slide. Oh, do I need to send it? Oh yeah, we're good. Oh yeah, next slide. There we go. Today's agenda. Thanks, Jocelyn. Um, today we'll be providing you with kind of that, which we do every single meeting, that introduction to Annex 9. We always know that there are a few new people that join us and we just want to make sure that you're familiar with us, especially those who don't know who we are. Um, so we'll, um, so again, take a minute to identify yourselves in the, the um, question box. Um, we will also do a recap of our last meeting in December, um, talk to you about our ongoing projects. And then we also like to list and discuss all the upcoming events, conferences, webinars, new research that's happening and hear from all of you. So with that, I'll pass it over to Shafina who will provide you with an overview of Annex 9. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, as Jennifer mentioned, we are the Canadian and U.S. co-chairs of the Climate Change Impacts Annex, Annex 9 of the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. This annex is led by uh, jointly by Environment and Climate Change Canada and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Um, the, the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement is an agreement between Canada and the U.S first signed in 1972 to protect the quality of the waters of our Great Lakes. It uh, contributes to the quality of life of millions of Canadians and Americans by identifying shared priorities, coordinating actions to restore and protect the chemical, physical and biological integrity of the waters of the Great Lakes. So the purpose of this, this annex is really to contribute to the achievement of the general and specific objectives um, of the agreement by coordinating our efforts to identify, quantify, understand, and predict the impacts of climate change on the waters, on the quality of the waters of the Great Lakes, and by sharing information with Great Lakes resource managers um, so that they can proactively address these impacts. Um, one of the ways that we're sharing information with uh, our uh, Great Lakes resource managers is by developing information products um, and initiatives such as this, like the webinar series. Um, some of our products, like the climate summaries uh, of the Great Lakes basins, which are produced annually and quarterly, um, and uh, major climate trends and patterns, uh, can all be uh, found on the binational.net website. So a lot of our products um, you can find on binational.net. So, um, the work of the Annex uh, is, is being implemented by a subcommittee, which is again jointly led by ECCC and NOAA. And the work of the uh, Annex 9 is a little bit different from perhaps the others, um, but like all other annexes, it is necessarily collaborative and partnership driven. Um, so we need the help of our extended subcommittee members um, in order to, to move forward with our work uh, of, of implementing the Annex. We have currently over 90 extended subcommittee members identified and um, we gather once every three months in, uh, in this meeting uh, to discuss our work, 
um, to, to hear from our committee members on what they're working on, um, to talk about areas for collaboration. We share news and events and conferences. Um, and um, uh, it also offers your committee members a chance uh, to provide us with comments and feedbacks on our documents and on the work that we are we're undertaking. So we have a, a diverse group of uh, membership, um, you know, ranging from conservation authorities to the chiefs of Ontario to our provincial uh, and state uh, ministries, um, as well as um, national entities like the U.S. Uh, national Park Service or Parks Canada, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. So, um, you know, we invite people uh, from governments, uh, from indigenous and, and tribal organizations uh, to non-government organizations and academia to join us. And if you would like to join us, we're always happy to have you on our team and you could contact Jocelyn or me or Jennifer um, to express your interest in, in joining with us. So I'll turn it back over to Jennifer. Sure, thanks Shafina. Uh, so our last Annex 9 quarterly call was held last or back in December, though it still feels like December out today because we were actually having snow and sub-freezing temperatures. Not wait, wanting that for um, April 1st, um, but it was held on December 10th and we hosted Fiona Warren, Dr. Um, Al um, Petronero and Valerie Cote who helped us navigate Canada's national issues report and provided um, a deeper dive into the water resources chapter and a live demo of Canada's new map for um, of adaptation actions. Uh, the December 10th webinar was recorded and is available to you as all of our webinars are. So please email Jocelyn or Shafina or myself um, to get a link to that recording. Uh, meeting minutes are also available um, and you can, um, and if you provide your contact information um, in the question or chat box, even today, we'll make sure we can follow up with you um, on that meeting. And with that, I'll pass it back to Shafina. Thanks, Jennifer. So um, if you have joined us in the past, uh, you're aware of the, the joint project that we're uh, taking on with the Ontario Climate Consortium, our data visualization product. Uh, products are basically meant to create uh, visually appearing materials on climate projections within the Great Lakes Basin, um, just to make it easier uh, for stakeholders to better understand the impacts and to be able to use those products um, in the work that they do. Um, as an update, um, we are now at the final stages of approval and we're hoping to get them on to binational.net very shortly. Um, I would, this has been a long haul and I would like to particularly thank our partners, um, Sharon and Michael from OCC and uh, Frank and Wendy uh, from the Meteorological Service of Canada for hanging in there and uh, for, for moving this project along and, and getting us to, to that final end product. So thank you so much to all of them uh, for, uh, for your great work on this project and uh, we're really excited that we're seeing the end of it and we're hoping to have it up there for all of you um, very, very shortly. Great, thanks Shafina. And uh, another big project that we have going on right now um, is both a retrospective and a prospective report. And this is in honor of the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement's 50th anniversary, which we're celebrating this year in 2022. And we're currently working with GLISA on uh, synthesizing of climate information for each lake and historically going back 50 years. And uh, we're also then looking 50 years into the future as a second piece of that. And we wanna do that as a way to see what has changed and what we've accomplished over the past 50 years and what we might expect in the next and the upcoming 50 years of the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. Uh, this project is intended to be presented at the 50th um, Water Quality Agreement Anniversary Forum, which I think will be held in September. Is that correct, Shafina? Uh, I think the goal is October. 
October, that's what I thought, but I actually have started seeing two dates, the end of September and the end of October, and I'm actually not quite sure, and I actually couldn't even find it online today. So watch your, uh, definitely your email um, and announcements for when we get final dates for that meeting. Um, um, that will be taking place in Windsor, Ontario, and that will be our big triennial forum. Um, so um, and, and so basically we're working on the, this retrospective and prospective report. Um, the final reports are expected to be completed at some point this summer. Um, we're currently in kind of that revision phase and uh, we've been providing, we have a group um, of folks that have provided uh, feedback on that and it will be completed then and officially launched uh, for everybody's use um, at the public forum. Shavina? Yeah, thanks, Jennifer. Um, the next topic that we wanted to discuss with all of you here today as our extended subcommittee um, is the, the actual forum and our role at the forum. Um, we're, we're, um, we're currently looking for panelists and, and uh, uh, presenters uh, to speak uh, as part of our uh, climate change impacts um, portion of the, of the forum. Um, as Jennifer indicated, it's going to be in the fall in Canada. Uh, the theme for the forum is our Great Lakes, celebrating past successes and preparing for the future for future challenges. So, um, in in um, discussing s some ideas um, internally uh, of what we would like to potentially present. Um, we would uh, really love to focus not just on the science of climate change in the basin, but also on the impacts at the local, local level, including economic impacts and, of course, um, solutions at the local level, both at the municipal, uh, provincial, state levels. And we would absolutely love to the, uh, have an involvement uh, or perspective from the indigenous or tribal perspectives as well. Um, so uh, today we're inviting all of you uh, to, to give it a thought, and if uh, if you're interested, we would invite expressions of interest from you, um, as well as any suggestions that you might have, you know, from previously attending um, presentations or webinars or, or conferences, uh, or or if you've read some papers uh, of potential panelists or, or presenters that you could suggest. Um, as I said, we we would like to uh, have a perspective from a broad range of stakeholders. Um, within the basin, and um, and uh, we invite all of you to um, to give it some thought. And if you're interested, please let us know. Um, what we're expecting the role of the panelists or the presenters to be um, is really to give a, a, a brief presentation um, and then to take part in a moderated chat with a couple of peers, um, sharing your perspectives on a given issue, uh, which could include past successes current achievements, your challenges, and how we position ourselves to move um, forward um, for success in the future. So, um, um, so if you are interested, kindly do let uh, Jennifer uh, or me know or, or get in touch with Jocelyn as well. We, we'd love to hear from you. And if you have any ideas as well, uh, we'd be happy to hear from you. Great. Thanks, Shafina. And uh, yeah, any questions on that? And if you have names or would like to volunteer or think you'd be the perfect person for our panel, you go ahead and put those into the question box um, or email um, any of us, Jocelyn, Shafina, or I, and because uh, we are looking for names. So we're hoping to get those from all of you. Okay, so, oh yeah, and any other questions? I'm not seeing any in the question box. Um, or you can just raise your hand. If you have a comment about any of this and like to make a comment, please raise your hand. I'll take you off mute. Again, we want this to yeah. be a discussion. Yeah, any feedback on, on uh, the presentations would be certainly appreciated. Okay, nothing right now. So why don't we go on? But again, at any time, if you want to raise your hand, we'll call on you and unmute you and you can, uh, you can join us. All right, next slide, Jocelyn. There we go. Oh my gosh, I look at this schedule for upcoming Great Lakes events <laughs> and it blows my mind. I think after two years of being pent up 
And with the pandemic seem to be seeming to be, you know, letting up a little bit. Wow, everybody has scheduled something for this spring. Amazing. Um, and so we have lots coming up. You can see all the different things that are happening on the screen. Um, to highlight some of those, um, May 16 through 20, um, the annual International Association for Great Lakes Research, or IAGLER, will be held in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, this year, the conference is being held um, as part of the Joint Aquatic Sciences Meeting, which brings together sister organizations um, for the Consortium of Aquatic Science Societies. So it's like nine different groups, they're all coming together, um, but IAGLER is going to be part of that, so uh, we'll probably see many of you in Grand Rapids. Um, May 22 through 27 is the 12th International Conference on Toxic Cyanobacteria being held at the University of Toledo. And this conference is a joint effort with the Interdisciplinary Freshwater Harmful Algal Bloom Workshop. And then May 24 through 26, um, the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy in partnership with the US EPA will host a Great, the Great Lakes Areas of Concern Conference. This is gonna be in person in Muskegon, Michigan. Um, I know the AOC community has couldn't wait to get back in person. And I think this has been um, delayed um, even a little bit to get us to the end of May. Um, but I'm sure a lot of you who are interested and in, in involved in that AOC process will be in Muskegon. Then in June one through two, um, the Great Lakes Fishery Commission's annual meeting will be held in Traverse City, Michigan. The Great Lakes Commission semi-annual meeting will be in Green Bay in June. And also in June is the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Cities Initiative, um, which will be hosting its um, annual meeting in St. Catharines. Um, the theme this year for the, for the mayors is uh, the powering the blue economy and leveraging the potential of our freshwater resources. I know that's a big issue for all of us around the basin and how we can grow um, our blue economy. Um, also in June, the Council of the Great Lakes Region will be hosting their economic forum in Chicago, um, Illinois. And in September, um, the Understanding um, Algal Blooms Conference, um, which will highlight current scientific knowledge um, related to our, um, algal blooms will also be held in Toledo. And then finally, in October, um, we have our State of Lake Michigan 2022 conference, which will be in Traverse City. Shafina. Yeah, so um, webinars upcoming, um, not as many, but uh, April seems to be quite busy. Um, we'll start off uh, April 4th to the 8th, uh, which is coming up next week. This is a week-long five-part webinar series, which is gonna focus on assessing and um, enhancing the resilience of the Great Lakes coastal wetlands. The series is being hosted by Environment and Climate Change Canada and the Toronto and Region Conservation Authority. Over the past four years, um, ECCC has completed a novel climate change vulnerability assessment of coastal wetlands and is excited to share the findings from this assessment along with the adaptation strategies and possible implementation options for enhancing coastal wetland resilience. Um, I don't think Greg is here with us today, otherwise I could have asked him to, to speak to this a little bit more because he's the organizer for, the, for that webinar series. Um, April 6th, uh, this is the third webinar in the Great Lakes Frightmighties Collaboratives webinar series, which will feature two Canadian experts speaking about wetlands, habitat, fish, and mapping invasive reed species in wetlands. April 13th, Canada's Commissioner of the Environment and Sustainable Development, uh, Jerry DeMarco, will be hosting a webinar called Lessons Learned from Canada's Record on Climate Change and other recent reports to discuss his latest reports um, to our Canadian Parliament. And then finally, April 27th and May 9th, um, there's two webinars that are going to be focusing on new research under the Ontario, C uh, sorry, the, the Ohio Sea Grants Stone Lab and the Harmful Algal Blooms Research Initiative at Ohio State University. The first webinar um, is going to focus on wa walleye fisheries in Lake Erie and genetic research findings, and the second on harmful agricult aquacultural pathogens and uh, new ways to detect it in uh, aquaculture, aquaculture. Pardon me, that's hard for me to say. Aquacultural context. Okay, so um, again, um, 
information about all of this is going to be sent out by Jocelyn to you uh, along with the with the summary for today. Great, thanks Shafina. Um, and now we have the opportunity for anyone who's online to provide an update on any new research or any of the work that you've been doing in the Great Lakes or any recent publications you'd like to share with the group. Um, you can uh, you can type in your updates in the, the question box function um, if that works for you, but I would love if anybody wanted to raise their hands, I can unmute you if you want to talk a little bit about what you're doing. And it doesn't necessarily have to be involved with what the subcommittee is doing, but uh, we want to share that that community knowledge. I know Greg isn't, some of our normal updaters are not available. Oh, Madeline McGee. Okay, let me um, unmute you, Madeline. All right, you're self-muted, but I think you can unmute now. Yeah, here you are. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, so I'm the chair for the Great Lakes Working Group of the Wisconsin Initiative on Climate Change Impacts. And earlier this year, we put out an assessment report for the state of Wisconsin. Um, and the Great Lakes portion includes an assessment of Lake Michigan and Lake Superior's kind of coastal ecosystem. And then there was a coastal resiliency working group that focused on uh, more infrastructure uh, related impacts of climate change in Wisconsin. And so that is um, all available online. They made, um, they did a big website update too to make everything a little more interactive. Mm -hmm. And I, can put the link uh, in the question box and then hopefully one of you guys can share it with everybody else. Um, but just wanted to let you guys know about that. We will do that. Thank you so much. That was great. Um, anyone else? Um, I don't know, Sean Logan, can you hear me? Do you wanna update on the workshop that you're putting together on the coastal stuff? Sorry to put you on the spot. All right, while we're waiting for Sean, uh, Becky Nicodemus, let me take you off mute. All right. Hey, hey Jen, can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I don't use GoToWebinar very often, so, okay, great. So I just wanted to mention I'm in NOAA's Office for Coastal Management, and we um, provide training through our office. And one that we periodically offer is called Seven Best Practices for Risk Communication. It's an hour and a half long webinar. It's not necessarily focused on climate change per se, but many people who attend are interested in, in climate related issues, but it is focused on risk communication. Um, we have two upcoming that are scheduled that are open to anyone April 12th and June 7th, and I can include a link in the question box for our training calendar um, in case folks are interested in um, registering for either of those. And, and then just in general, if we, we have other training related to climate change and adaptation planning and risk communication. So if anyone wants to, I invite anyone to poke around our um, Digital Coast training section. And if there's any training related um, things that are of interest, you can always reach out to me at my email address. Um, which I can also include. And thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Becky. Um, and thank Rebecca. You. Oh, what? Sorry. I was just going to ask Rebecca, is that open to uh, people uh, on the other side of the border too? Sounds really interesting. Yes. Yes. Our trainings are definitely open to um, outside of the U.S. Some some of our trainings have more of a U.S. focus, like, you know, our economics ones will be training on economics data that's available in the U.S., for instance. But our risk communication training is definitely um, open to anyone, even Canada and other countries. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, maybe okay. um, while we're uh, actually, waiting. I was going to comment on, thank you, Rob Kroll. Oh, my gosh, I totally forgot about our poster. It's done. And I don't think I've even updated Shafina and Jocelyn about that. So NOAA, in combination or in partnership uh, with Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Committee, have just completed and printed these fantastic climate change posters um, that are both in English and Ojibwe. And, uh, and so and it, it really looks at climate changing from the perspective um, of um, that indigenous 
um, Great Lakes Indigenous people's story of the Thunderbird and what they're experiencing. And we talk a little bit about climate change and introduce lots of different Ojibwe words um, into talking about that. It is available now. Um, uh, I think Rob in the question box put the link um, to that. Um, and I will get you, Jocelyn, remind me to do that, the cell sheet that you can include in the minutes so people can see what it looks like. Um, and actually, while um, I'll turn it over to Shafina and I'll find it and I'll share that as well. Thanks, Jennifer. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. I, we, we, I know we talked about it a while ago, but thanks for, for letting us know. It's complete now, yeah. Um, I was just going to uh, put Pamela on the line. Pamela, do you have any updates uh, from the provincial side uh, to share with us today? Oh, not hearing you. Okay. Maybe I'm just not. That Pamela has left. I think she probably oh. had another. Okay. All right. I, I saw her name earlier, so. Um, so Jennifer, is that gonna that poster gonna be up online, and um, is it also is there gonna be a link through binational.net? Um, I don't know if there's a link through binational.net um, since it was created just by NOAA through the regional team, um, NOAA Great NOAA and the Great Lakes and um, the Great Lakes Indian Fish by Glyphwick. Um, but yes, it is, oh, and I'm trying to find it quickly in my email, but I think it's in my NOAA, um, and I'll just show it to everybody. Oh, actually, I could probably click on the link in Rob's email is our link to, let's see. No, that might not be easier. Okay, let's see. About... I think we have it on our home page for the Great Lakes. Oh, it's not, where is it? Oh, here it is. All right. All right, let me um, share my screen. Oops, we're seeing your calendar. <laughs> Oh, are you? Great. That is unbelievable. He looks very busy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a pretty picture. Uh, where? Oh, sharing. Here we go. Um, show screen. Oh, there we go. Yes, now we can see it. Now we can see it. To make um, it bigger. I can make it bigger. Um, and I'm not seeing it. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if I can enlarge it. This is just from the internet. Um, if you um, actually, I will post this link um, right to it, but you can see the front of it is this beautiful artwork. We had um, an artist uh, from the Fond du Lac band um, of the Lake Superior Chippewa um, did the artwork for us. And then on the back side, you can see it has the story of the Thunderbird and then all the different um, weather and climate Ojibwe words and um, some photos of uh, different uh, climate change impacts uh, from some of the um, uh, tribal lands and also some um, data from NOAA showing that increase in temperature and that increase in precipitation that we're getting, um, especially in the upper Great Lakes. Now, if I can go back. All right, so now I will stop showing. Okay. Change it back to Jocelyn. Yes, we're very excited about it. I can't believe that that totally slipped my mind in talking to you because I feel like I'm talking about it to everybody. Um, and uh, let's see, we're at the question box. All right. Um, I will put that in there as well, um, our NOAA link, um, and then you can see the poster. And, uh, and you can order them from both me or um, Glyphwick. And the ordering information is also on the poster. Thanks, Jennifer. I think we have one last thing left, which is to talk about our, our next webinar. 
uh, which is uh, currently scheduled for July the 8th. And um, it'll, be, it'll also be uh, joint with our quarterly business call. Um, we're, we're looking uh, for presenters for our next webinar. Um, so if you have an interest in, in presenting at our next webinar around July the 8th, uh, we are flexible with the date if, uh, if July the 8th doesn't work for the presenter. So, you know, um, please, uh, please do contact us to let us know. Um, and uh, if you're also interested in in future series after July, we would be we would be happy to hear from you for that as well. And please don't forget to send us potential names, or if you're interested uh, for the forum uh, in presenting, uh, let us know about that as well. Okay. Do we have any questions? Anybody wanting to share anything? Anyone else? Not seeing, any, not seeing anything in the chat. Uh -huh. Yep, not seeing anything in the chat. All right. Um, I think with that, I think we might be done. So thank you all well, thank you. for joining us today. Yes, thank you. And uh, uh, we, we wish you well between now and July the 8th when we next see you. We hope that you have a great spring and great summer. Um, and, uh, and please do be in touch. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks everyone. Good afternoon.